Hi. Well, here we are again. Another day, another dragon, another age. I can't sit down or even stand up without there being more Dragon Age Veilguard vale news and I gotta talk about it. So here we go. If you're a fan of all things Bethesda, RPGs, Dragon Age, Bioware, Witcher, if any of that stuff sounds good to you, then consider leaving a like at the least and a sub at the most. Thank you so much. Let's go. All right, so a lot of this information, well, all this information really comes from IGN's hands-on preview uh, impressions, and Shinobi uh, on Twitter is actually who sort of compiled all this information, and I just wanted to elaborate on all the key points without spoiling anything. I've sort of removed some of the names so that way I don't give anything away that Bioware has given away. All right. They start off by saying they were skeptical before playing, but now I left feeling like these 10 long years just might have been worth the wait. Much more hopeful that this could be the hit that Bioware desperately needs. I walked away with excitement and curiosity, but mostly relief to wave many of my concerns goodbye. This type of attitude is exactly what I was hoping for from a lot of the fans. The skepticism is something that I think everyone felt, not, not just the fans, but people new to the franchise. And you have to really think about how it feels whenever you're going into something with an almost completely locked in preconceived notion. These people walked in probably like you and I would, cautiously optimistic or completely skeptical so having those notions walking in it's a huge and pleasant surprise to, to say the least that the reactions have been positive regarding their expectations versus what they got to see very exciting stuff while the game is not open world like Dragon Age Inquisition, they were impressed by how much exploration can still be done in the various regions, as well as the impact that you can have on those regions specifically. It feels like a mix of Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition with the more streamlined approach of Dragon Age 2 and the geographical and socio-political diversity of Inquisition. Now, for those of you who have played Dragon Age Inquisition, you'll know that Dragon Age Inquisition had plenty of criticisms of its own, like the bloated world that was developed by MMO game developers. While the Dragon Age games are not necessarily known for exploration, but more of an open hub area mixed with very densely packed areas, it is really nice to hear that the people still found value in exploration at all. A lot of the times in Inquisition there would be encounter after encounter, bumping into enemies when all you were trying to do was just have a nice stroll through the wilderness and explore on your own. So. Hopefully that's something that they touch on in Dragon Age Veilguard because they did say that they were surprised about the impact that you have on the world. Hopefully that's something that they touch on in Dragon Age Veilguard because they did say that they were surprised about the impact that you have on the world. So I'm hoping that this is something alluding to, you know, the choices that we will make um, that will have impact on the world specifically. And we'll talk about that in just a second. There is an effective and succinct story recap from Varric at the start of the game, which is right in line with the Dragon Age series as they do the recaps, the backstories, and whatnot very well with a really cool video with a unique art style. So I'm really happy to hear that they stuck with this. Hopefully that will kick off a great sense of familiarity and nostalgia since they are sticking with Varric as a storyteller. Combat feels like there is a lot of room to create highly customized builds of your Rook, who is the main protagonist. The combat is another thing that a lot of people who have seen it up close or have had hands-on have been praising. A lot of the fans were upset whenever they heard about the fact that you cannot control your companions directly anymore because as the dev said, you couldn't handle it and there is way too much going on for you to have time to think about switching to another character. I talked about this in my last video, but I know a lot of people really love the tactical feel of Dragon Age Origins and really wanted that to return. You know, in Dragon Age Inquisition, they tried to remedy this by having a mix of both by giving you the option to change camera perspectives to a top-down view. But in the modern age of gaming, I think that this is the right move to pull in new people to the franchise with some really amazing looking action combat. The scrappiness of the Rook reminded them a bit of Hawk in Dragon Age 2 rather than the more chosen one vibe of the Inquisitor. 
for some reason, this was one of the biggest things that I took away from this information because Hawk is so incredibly memorable because of his quippy attitude or his frightening turn of tone whenever you decide to be stern or violent in dialogue. So the fact that they are saying the scrappiness reminded them of Hawk, it's really gr great to hear because while I liked the Inquisitor from Dragon Age Inquisition, it did seem like they were, you know, the holier than thou, king of the world, king of the roost, king of the roosters. I don't know. Companions will sometimes drop useful hints during combat. The first thing that I thought about whenever I heard this is Dragon's Dogma, where your companions will yell out things like, hey, that wolf, it's weak to fire, or shoot the Cyclops in the eye. Sometimes companion barks during combat can get annoying, but we'll see just how repetitive and redundant they get whenever we play it for ourselves. Your attitude and choices in dialogue will be noted and remembered in more detail. For example, you know, choosing to be antagonistic with someone will let you know that you traded verbal jabs with that person, implying possible consequences later. Now, we have seen this in countless RPGs before where it's pretty much even memed at this point with other games like Telltale Games um, where you'll get a little pop-up at the top saying that they will remember this or they won't forget that, you know, so on and so forth. One of the things that Dragon Age started to do in Dragon Age 2 specifically is giving you an idea of how the tone and attitude of the selected dialogue piece will be delivered. They have stated that this is something that you can turn off, similar to how you can turn it off in Dragon Age Inquisition, to give your choices less guidelines and sort of allow you to think for yourself rather than looking for an icon to see if this is a nice thing to say or a quippy thing or a mean thing. So hopefully these repercussions will be much more direct and the reminders of your consequences will be, you know, more specific, you know, rather than just filling up a morality bar for each character that you interact with. It became clear that there would consistently be tons of choices in Veilguard that'll have lasting results, more than the usual Bioware game. So again, speaking on choice and consequence, this might be showing just how deep choices and consequence will go in this iteration of Dragon Age versus the older entries. Earlier, I touched on how people with hands-on said that there was real world impact from choices i think this is exactly what they are alluding to just a random example but imagine like a village full of people needing help and you do your best to help them one thing leads to another and that village gets destroyed now all of those people that you could have interacted with are gone and the village is permanently there as a ruined landmark to remind you of your choices that you made there have been great games that have done this really well in the past, like The Witcher 3, for example, so I'm really hoping that we get some consequences that really make us take things seriously as we make choices throughout the story. The initial prologue is linear in approach, but the game becomes much more free and opens up and allows you to tackle quests as you please and unlock more regions. This is pretty par for the course, uh, not just for Dragon Age, but just a lot of RPGs in general as they really want players to get a sense of the world and be tied at the hip with other main characters so they have an understanding of what's going on and sort of taking the story in vicariously through other main characters without the main character just running off and doing whatever they want to do right off the bat like you would do in a Bethesda game. You know you do that. We all do that. Mix of drastically different regions like the Arlathon Forest is gorgeous and colorful. Nugs burrowed into grass, vast array of nature, while Hosberg Wetlands is full of a more horror-inspired aesthetics because they've been consumed by the blight. Those who miss the gore and dark fantasy of Dragon Age Origins will find that too in places where the blight has spread. This is one thing that I was not too surprised by considering the beauty of Dragon Age Inquisition and when it is compared to Dragon Age 1 and 2, it became extremely vibrant and colorful and beautiful in many areas with completely different biomes. So I'm really happy to hear that this is something that they have hopefully elevated and at the very least, it's returning. It's coming back. Color is cool. Treviso is a bustling and lively city, so much to explore that I kept getting sidetracked. The last time that we got a big bustling city in Dragon Age was, of course, in Dragon Age 2 in the city of Kirkwall. Now, this is a region that we haven't necessarily seen explored in Dragon Age amongst many of the other regions in Thetis, but it, it is really cool to hear that we will be getting you know big cities rather than just wilderness like we did in Dragon Age Inquisition. 
party banter pauses and picks up again later if you trigger combat, a cutscene, etc. that will interrupt the dialogue. And I absolutely love this because it reminds me of Red Dead Redemption 2, actually. You'll be riding your horses or walking and talking with the character, and something will interrupt them, and whenever the encounter or interruption is over, they will pick up right where they left off and say something like, Now where was I? What was I saying? Oh, that's right. Cheese. Another way to look at this is it's really nice to hear that they will not be allowing you to miss out on too much dialogue just because you, you know, happen to fall down a hill or run into an enemy and then get punished by never being able to hear what that other character had to say. Customizable difficulty options allows you to turn off things like navigation and look for in-game clues in the environment to follow up your goal. You guys know me, I love whenever developers give players more options to curate the experience the way that they want it to be. We see this a lot in Ubisoft games, cropping up more and more with accessibility options and things to really turn the game into something that speaks to them rather than being pigeonholed into playing their way or the highway. Hopefully we will see full on key binding for console players, difficulty scalers for input and output, and different things like that. Bioware listened to the complaints about the Hinterlands and Inquisition and tons of fetch quests wherein Veilguard the scope isn't nearly as bloated and quests point back to the main story, the region, the faction, or the companions. This is great news for all of you Dragon Age Inquisition players out there for sure because a lot of the times you would help someone and do a quest in Dragon Age and that just felt like it was totally disconnected from the world at large or, or even having anything to do with what was going on in the main quest because at the very least you know we want the world to be believable and the characters to really feel like they have a purpose and connection to what's happening at large a tighter scope and much more densely packed narrative for each quest is something i think we can all agree is much better than a massive map with just tons of icons and quests all over the place i just spit everywhere the two main villains feel much more present throughout the game compared to Corypheus in Inquisition. Without going into spoilers for Dragon Age Inquisition, if you know, you know, but it did kind of feel like the, the big bad was always just sort of waiting on you to do something all the time and while you just barely ever saw him at all. The lighthouse, which is your hub, like your player home, starts to feel more lived in and I'm really happy to hear that it'll be much more lived in. For example, you might walk into a room and see somebody interacting with something that they weren't before, when otherwise they might just be standing in the same spot or sitting in the same chair every time that you walk into that area, like we've seen with older games. If you remember, this is something that they did really well with Mass Effect Andromeda of all games. Huh. Well, hopefully they can build off of that. So there you go. That's everything that I found recently about Dragon Age Veilguard. I'm trying to keep up with everything. Let me know what you're excited about in Dragon Age Veilguard or if any of this stuff it makes you feel a little more relieved because that's what I think a lot of people are trying to latch on to right now is why are you relieved? Tell me, please continue. So I did, I continued and I made this video. So let me know how you feel about Dragon Age Veilguard with all of this news. Thank you all so much for the support, lady. Lady? Yeah, lady. Thanks, lady. So thank you all so much for the support lately. It's meant so much to me. Consider leaving a like at the least and a sub at the most. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.